Tonight's theme is one of the oldest forms of fishing. The Native Americans did it all over the state of Florida centuries ago. And today, it's one of the most economical ways to fish and still have plenty of fun on the water. Tonight, it's all about paddle fishing here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. We're so glad to see you back for another week on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Getting past the rain and the heat, the fishing has been epic on all levels, even when it comes to fishing from a paddle craft. Right, Rick? Absolutely, Bree. And I know that you were out just a couple weeks ago doing some paddling around Miami. Mm -hmm and you were wrecking the peacock and largemouth bass. So I can't yes. wait to see and share that footage with everybody at home. Oh, we will. Well, I know I love kayak canoe and stand up paddle fishing, which is something our CCA workbench wonder, Dave Farrell, might know a thing or two about, Dave, but I think your neighbor over there, Mr. Yeah, Collins, Yeah, you can see by know. my uh, svelte uh, physique here you that I'm not sturdy. a big paddler. <laughs> I don't paddle that much. <laughs> But Colin does. He's the guy that was catching that big peacock in the opening part. So That's he's right. going to tell us a lot about it. He's that famous guy. Yep. He does a lot man. of He's it. a lot prettier than I am. Oh, not true. <laughs> you look sturdier than it. Uh, uh -huh. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. The Discover Crystal River Northwest region is first up today. And Captain Jeff Hageman is more than ready to tell us the best way to get out there and paddle about. Go for it, Hag. Kayaks, canoes, paddle boards are a great and stealthy way to fish my region. Less expensive, pretty much maintenance free uh, compared to a, a boat, a whole lot easier to transport. They even make paddle boards now that fit into backpacks. You can inflate them when you get to your spot. Uh, get out on the water really easy, a lot of places to launch. As far as spooky fish go, they're hard to beat. You can really cover a lot more ground than when you're actually waiting. So you can, you can move around quite more and catch a whole lot more fish. It's a perfect way to catch tailing redfish in my region. And there are a ton of places to launch, like I said, in my region. Kayaks, canoe trails through Wheaton Island, Fort DeSoto. We have hundreds of rivers and springs that you can go explore. Old, perfect Florida conditions that haven't been touched up in the rivers. And a beautiful way to check out the scenery and wildlife and get a great workout to boot. Moving inshore, Captain Mario Costello of Tall Tales Charters out of Plantation Inn reports a good redfish bite right now. We're on the Mangrove Islands and Keys from Crystal River to the Chaz. They're working the Mangrove Islands and that have active schools of mullet around them, the points and coves, and overhanging mangrove branches. He's using a shrimp on an eighth ounce jig head or a free line pinfish as they move up close to the shoreline. Most of the fish are mid-slot right now, anywhere from 22 to 25 inches. Multiple hookups are not uncommon right now, and since the schools are sometimes up to 100 fish, so he's got a pile of them up there. Captain John Lane at JB Charters at Appalachia Coral right now reports the redfish bite. They've moved in, and they're mainly holding around the oyster bars and marshes and deep grass ledges and banks. The bite has been mainly on the incoming tide, and he's been using fresh pet shrimp on a standard Carolina, excuse me, Carolina rig with a two watt hook and a half ounce lead and 12 to 18 inches of fluorocarbon leader. Moving offshore, the grouper, Captain Nick Warrington of High Octane Charters out of Crystal River, reports a good gag grouper bite right now in 10 to 30 feet of water. Anchor up current in the rocks and ledges and drop down a live pinfish on a fish finder rig with 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. Roasted fish right now are averaging anywhere from 22 to 28 inches. And I've got a photo here of Tom German with his first keeper goober. He got on his 78th birthday. Nice. Happy birthday. All right, happy birthday, bud. And Captain JB, also out of Apple reports his gag bite right now has been real good. Mostly hanging in that 50, 60 foot of water over live bottom. Uh, he's been using live croakers and pinfish on a standard rig, and I've got a photo here of another gag, and then a West Coast gag from Captain John. Nice. All right, tell me about the red snappers, Pop. They seem to be everywhere right now. Everybody's out there for opening grouper, and there's no shortage of red snapper in my region. Anything you get out past that 120-foot mark, any kind of structure whatsoever at all, uh, there's plenty of red snapper. Knocker rigs, cut sardines, with squid or cut sardines are working really good. Um, 
save your life bait for your grouper spots. If you can get away from the snapper, but we've got so many red snapper right now, it's hard to get away from them. All right, well, I appreciate it. Good report. Way to start us off. It's time to take a look at the Alto Equipment hotspots from the Northwest region. He says, inshore, snook on the outgoing tide around the passes and beaches, use pinfish and sardines, and then offshore, hogfish, grunts, and sea bass on the flat rocks and sand bottom. Use fret cut shrimp on a knocker rig. What do you think about that, Bree? You know, he's so right about kayaking, canoeing, paddle, stand up paddleboard. You get to enjoy nature. It's a little, you know, it's very relaxing, especially, I've been taking me a lot in the canoe and it's fun with kids. Just pack a lot of snacks. Well, I hope that you, <laughs> I hope you brought in some pictures so we could see that sweet Mia. Oh, I will next okay. week. I got right. you on those. All right. All right, since we're in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region, we want to tell you about how you can win a deluxe scallop season getaway with a two night stay at Plantation Inn on Crystal River and a guided scalloping package plus airboat tour by River Adventure Tours. To enter, head over to our website, floridainsiderfishingreport.com slash contest by June 30th. And good luck. I know we'll be there. We're going in July. July 9th. We have all of our hotel rooms booked. Yeah. All the captains, most of them are going. Yep. Except our next captain, zooming in from Studio B in the Alvey Reels Northeast region, is Captain Tommy D. He has to work. So tell us all about the paddle life up there, Tommy. Bree, there's there's not enough snacks in the world for me with all my kids that I have to bring over That's there. That's true. But, <laughs> guys, you know what? The Alvey Sidecast Reels Northeast region, it's an awesome place to get your yak or your paddleboard on. You know, kayaks stand-up paddle boards they're hugely popular here and you know they're really the perfect watercrafts to access some really great fishing here in the region now to our south we have the tomoka basin and the pelissier flats in st augustine we have guana lake and in jacksonville we have chickapit bay as well as creeks like clapboard and simpsons and that's just to name a few that are readily accessible by kayak or paddleboard now most of these areas they're accessible by boat as well on the higher tide stage but you know, when the tide gets low, like we have in the morning this weekend, that's when those kayaks and paddle boards really shine. It gets super shallow in those areas at low tide, but the fish, they're gonna stay in some of those slightly deeper pockets, even when most of the water is sucked all the way out of there. Now, being able to fish those shallow areas, even on that low tide, is one reason that so many people are taken to that kayak or paddle board. Now, on the other side of that, getting access to some flooded grass areas during our late summer and early fall flood tides, that can be made easy in a kayak or a paddleboard because they draft pretty much next to nothing. Now there's also quite a few anglers that go deep, like Colin there in the studio, and get out along the beach and hook into some huge sharks and tarpon from their paddle crafts. Now, if you're new to this kind of fishing, you know, there's quite a few really good kayak and paddleboard guides in the Northeast region. I'd highly recommend booking one of them. They can teach you all kinds of stuff from just paddling around to catching some really big fish. And speaking of great kayak guides, I've got a picture. Kayak guide Captain Bart Swab sent me this picture of his daughter, Malia, and her 30 inch gator trout. How about that fish there? That's, That's a big old trout. It sure is. Now staying inshore, you know, I thought we'd give the usual suspects a break this week and talk about some snook. You know, we have some of the best snook fishing I can remember going on throughout the region right now. I've had great snook reports from Daytona to Palm Coast, but I've also been getting some great reports from as far north as Jacksonville. Now, a good buddy of mine has been consistently catching them up there in Palm Valley along the docks using a topwater plug early, and then he switches over to a subsurface plug once the sun comes up. Now my clients, we've been catching some nice snook around Matanzas Inlet on the flats first thing in the morning on top waters as well. Captain Chris Herrera from palmcoastfishing.com tells me they've been catching some slot size and even some overslot snook at night, fishing the bridges and the dock lights in Palm Coast, and they're using diving plugs or some really large free line live shrimp. Now, speaking of Palm Coast snook, I've got another picture here. Robbie Goodman sent me this picture of Giovanni Nesty and CJ Britton with a big Palm Coast canal snook. And those guys, man, they're hardcore. Those kids are the, uh, the future of fishing down there. They stay out from first light till dark. So good, good job, guys. Yeah, now, good moving job. offshore, guys, kingfish, they've definitely started to show up through the region. I spoke to Captain Jimmy Laidler from thelegendfishing.com. He tells me he's been on a pretty decent kingfish uh, bite right along the beach this past week. Captain Jimmy said he's caught some kingfish up to 40 pounds and he's been fishing from Captain's House, which is just uh, 
in St. Augustine, all the way down to the Flagler Pier. Now he says the pogies, they've been pretty thick as well, but a lot of the bait schools are in really close to the beach, just behind where the waves are breaking. Now, along with live pogies, Jimmy said he's been doing really well trolling some ribbon fish as well. And there's also been some really big kingfish coming from out deeper in the very south end of the region in that 140 plus foot range east of Ponce Inlet. And there's some smaller schoolie kings on the near shore reefs out of St. Augustine as well. So plenty of kingfish going around this weekend. Now, also offshore, you know, the snapper bite, it was great around this past weekend's full moon and it should continue to be good through this week. I spoke to Captain Adam Jeffrey from Real Dream Fishing. He tells me they've absolutely hammered the snappers over this last weekend. And Adam said he ran an overnight trip for some mangrove snapper. He ended up catching over 40 or even more big mangroves, fishing with mostly frozen sardines on the bottom in about 120 to 150 foot east of St. Augustine. Now, Adam said they weren't really in their full spawn mode just yet, but they were grouped up and they did get some up top on the flat lines. Now, along with the mangoes, Adam said they got in some big mutton snappers as well and some groupers in that same depth. And I've got one last photo here, guys. This is Matt ne uh, Neville with a big mangrove snapper he caught with Captain Adam Jeffrey from Real Dream Fishing Charters. Wow, that's a nice fish. That's Tommy, I good. got a question for you. Have the tarpon starters showing up this week? Good question. You know what, guys, they really have. I've seen a bunch of them inshore and some really big fish inshore and then also behind the shrimp boats and in the pogey pods. So really in the last few days, it is really ramped up. It's it's definitely tarpon time here in the Northeast region. All right, I can't wait to hear more about that. You know I like that poon, so. We, <laughs> but it is time for us to check out the strike zone uh, hotspots from the Northeast region inshore. Snook at, at night on the dock lights and bridges from Daytona up through Palm Coast. Subsurface plugs, bucktails, and free line shrimp have been the best. And then offshore, bigger kingfish on the beach, 30 to 50 feet of water throughout the entire region. Smaller schoolie kings on the near shore wrecks and reef is where you're going to find them. All right, sounds good to me. Coming up next, we're seeing what the Startron Central West region is catching this weekend. But first, we're chatting with Dave Farrell at the workbench for Rigs and Techniques. What do you have up your sleeve over there at the CCA workbench, Dave, besides Colin Bukowski? <laughs> no sleeves today no for sleeves. some reason. Thank Dave, you, Colin Real Legends. I have no sleeves. But uh, <laughs> we are going to be talking about how to keep yourself alive on a kayak. Well, Very that's important. important. Oh, <laughs> safety first. Safety, safety first, safety. always. Like we'll it. be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Contender boats, always in the game. Noble Air Charters, raising the bar yet again. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fishing info and channel surfing. And Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Casa Vieja Lodge on everyone's bucket list. Left teaser. Left flat as well. Two fish. They're everywhere. Right flat teaser as well. Right, left flat, right flat teaser. Come to Casa Vieja Lodge and check it off your list.
We're here at the CCA workbench for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques, and we're going to talk a little bit about paddling. I, I started doing this a long time ago. I was one of the first guys, unfortunately, to get one of those little paddle boats and a surf kayak with a friend of mine, and <laughs> I ended up quickly learning that you prepare to tip the thing over. You don't go thinking you're not going to tip it yeah, over. Yeah. You go <laughs> assuming that you're going to tip it over at some point during the day because you don't put your keys in the cup holder and <laughs> start paddling. So yep. first off, you want to make sure that you're wearing a good PFD, yeah. right? And this is the kind that you like to use, right? Yeah, so I like to use something you know like this. It's got a lot of storage on it, a place to clip your uh, VHF radio, which is something that's really important to have because you're going out there and you can be in a place where you don't have cell service. Right. So. Uh, if you're out there with a buddy system, which is something you really need to do, don't go out there alone. Always come with go one out or two there with people at least. One or, at least one or two people and make sure those people have been out there before because you don't, the last thing you want to do is all be out there and be the, new be to the it first and guy. have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> so this is a life vest I like to use, something along this style. You don't want to use one of these. Yeah, this is. I brought this for a reason <laughs> because when you, bring, when you use one of these CO2 inflatables and you get wet, poosh. You can find yourself, you know, wearing yeah. a life raft when you don't really want to be wearing a life raft. Yeah, and I mean, we, a life we, we found out about the guy that was reaching for his pliers and fell in and just went. Pfft, yeah, exactly. Guy. You don't exactly. want to be that guy. Yeah. So <laughs> you, the vest style is, you know, they're still comfortable enough that you can get your paddle on. Yeah. But you're you're not gonna blow yeah, up. Yeah, and the other thing, the other thing about it is, again, you can put your pliers up in this storage right here. If you flip the vest over, you have all this cushion right there. You know, a kayak, oh, for your back. Yeah, a kayak seat can be a little bit uncomfortable at times, especially when you're out there eight to 10 hours out of the day. So this provides, you know, a little bit of lumbar support and cushion to your seat. Mm -hmm. So that's just one of the safety things you need. And um, something to make sure you have is a flag. And this to me is probably one of the most important things. I'll use something like a bike flag, you know, people use when they're just bicycling on the side of the road because a lot of the standard safety flags that come for the kayaks are just too short in my opinion. Right. And if the flag's not anywhere between five and six feet. You, you might know, as well not even have it. Might, yeah, you might as well not even have it. Because imagine you get out there, it's flat calm, but you know, living in Florida, anything can happen at any given moment. Storm rolls through, the waves pick up. You know, you have white capping conditions and you realize that you're going to be paddling back in some breakers, which is mm -hmm. not a fun deal. And, you know, and you should always you should always make sure you have enough energy to get back. Yes. Because yeah. when you're going all the way out there, that's what we forget. We right. get all the way out there and we're fishing around, trolling around. Mm -hmm. And then you look back and you go, man, I'm a long way away from home. Yep. So you got to make sure you have enough stamina. Make sure you bring enough water and either Gatorade, some sort of hydration, protein bars. Stuff like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, back to the back to the flag. Mm -hmm. A boater's going to have a hard time seeing you from a distance on a flat calm day. So make it easy for them when you know you're in a rough, you're in rougher conditions. Make it easy for them. Have a flag. Have something that you can track him down if he can't see you. Mm -hmm. And another thing that people will do is they'll wear they'll wear a bright shirt, a bright colored shirt. You know, they have like fluorescent orange shirts or green performance shirts that you can wear that. You know, you can stand up and, you know, wave the guy down and make sure he sees you or use an air horn or a whistle. It also helps inshore if you're in a place like up in a river or a creek with high grass on the side. Absolutely. Because I know a lot of fellas who like to go cruising down the creek as fast yeah. as they can go. And if yeah. you're if they can't see you, they can run right over the top of you. Yeah. Another thing is uh, I have right here a drift sock and a lot of boaters, boaters will use something like this or a sea anchor. Now, this can be. This could be a lifesaver. It's a good life for saver. fishing and it's good for safety. And the reason being is because if you're a guy that uses a paddle and you're not used to using pedals, you know, you can just deploy this, throw it out in the back of your kayak if you need to re-rig something, and you'll drift maybe maybe a mile max as opposed to like two or three miles if the yeah, current's ripping offshore. Yeah, when you got a four or five knot current sometimes, yeah. you can be moving a long time in 20 minutes or something like that if you're yeah. looking down and then you don't realize it. But it's also good if you wanted to slow troll like live baits or something. You could yeah, put live absolutely. baits out and if you're moving too fast with the current, that sock will work and slow you down so your mm -hmm. baits aren't moving too fast and coming out of the water. It's and like you said, if, if, you, if you don't have a sock uh, to, to, to slow you down, you can get a little anchor. Yeah. You know, a little anchor with enough rope to get to the bottom can save you, too. Because, again, if you're out there in a big current and you're tiring out, if you stop paddling to rest, you're going backwards. Or, yeah. you know, and you're, and you're, you're not yeah, making you're not getting anywhere. making any headway. <laughs> yeah. So you throw out your anchor, you rest for a little bit, pull it up, go again, throw mm -hmm. out the anchor and head, head back. I also see that you got some uh, nice uh, leashes. For yeah, these are, these are from Diamond Fishing Products. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I came across these actually last year at ICAST when we were talking to them. And the really cool thing about these, I saw these and I had to get my hands on them. Because a lot of the paddle leashes and rod mm -hmm. leashes that they, they sell for kayaks are 
you know, they're made with like rope or threaded material, and that over over time with salt water is going to break. Deteriorates, yeah. And you know, the weight of a rod can, especially if you tumble in the surf, that rod can easily just snap the rod leash. So I wanted something a little more durable. And what a lot of people don't realize is you can still use this on a, as a paddle leash. All you need to do is wrap it around the paddle, and then just clip it right there, and it's an effective paddle leash as well. Yeah, and you don't you don't ever want to be out there without your paddle. No, no. And or, I always I actually always bring reels, actually. I always bring two sets of paddles because I've actually been out there and had one snap on me and that's not fun. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, when you're used to out there paddling with, you know, a dual blade, then it becomes a canoe out there and that's, that's, that's not ideal. <laughs> yeah. I also like, I also like to use waterproof boxes, you know, uh, again, for your keys, your phone. Yeah. You, also, you got to make sure though, when you use a waterproof box and you put a phone or a camera or something in it, if it's sitting out in the sun, this little thing turns into an oven. Yes. And I've cooked a really nice camera once in here. Mm -hmm. And but you you know if you put it out in the shade, you'll be fine. But you always want to make sure this is one of the ones from Plano that has the waterproof seal all the way around it. And I do the same thing with my tackle. All my tackle boxes that I use in a canoe or a kayak are going to have a waterproof seal so in case you know you you fall in, it's locked or and it's waterproof, so water can't go good all in it. Right. So. And uh, I recommend, you know, you're talking about slowing down your drift when you're slow trolling offshore and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people will question, you know, what's, what length rod do you need to use when you're fishing? And right. um, if you're fishing your baits on the surface or you're just freelining them, it really doesn't matter. But I would suggest if you're fishing a suspended bait with like an egg sinker or a trolling weight, you want something that's about six feet. That mm -hmm. when you catch that fish and that egg sinker gets to the rod tip, <laughs> yep. you can reach out grab it yeah. and it's just easy to grab it. The difference know? between six feet and seven feet is a long way it's, when you've got a sailfish a or a tuna that way. you're trying to get. Yeah, yeah. really bad. <laughs> oh man, that was great. I appreciate right. it, man. Thanks a lot. There you go, Rick. There you, you go. Can, you're ready to go out in the kayak. I'm Rick's ready. ready. I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. Oh man, we need to do it. We need to do that. Colin, are you going to take us? Absolutely. Rick, you promise you'll come? Uh, no contender. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the contender will be right next nope. to us for sure. All right, the Star Transcentral uh, West Region. All about 25. Yeah. <laughs> the Star Transcentral West Region is loaded with great fishing spots if you plan on using a kayak, canoe, or SUP. So, Jeff, give us the details. I, I can second that Rick Murphy will not get in a kayak. Come on, man. I've never seen it happen. Well, anyway, anything you possible. know what? In the Startron Central West region, I have to say, I believe kayak fishing really became popular here before a lot of regions in Florida, thanks to the folks at Economy Tackle, Hobie Kayak, Reception Kayak. Some of the pioneers in it really helped pave the way uh, for what it is today. It's, it's a full-blown sport now. Um, they have bass tournaments, saltwater tournaments, all the IFA Redfish tournaments, the next day there's a kayak event. So it's really become quite the sport. Uh, but let's start with the canoes. You know, out in our state park, Mayaka State Park, if you don't own a canoe, you can go out there and rent one and not only paddle through the lakes in the park, but you can get into the river system and fish or photograph alligators and birds and stuff and see if that, that's something that you would like to do. Back to the kayaks, um, the kayaks, like I said, the folks at Economy Tackle have a couple kayak fishing guides that are not only knowledgeable on rigging your kayak, but they'll take you out on a kayak and make sure that you're enjoying it before you go spend all the big money. Cause it's not cheap anymore to outfit a kayak for fishing. And now they've even gone to paddle boards. And there was a gentleman, I couldn't find the picture. I was trying to. It actually landed a tarpon on a paddleboard last summer in Big Bass. So a lot of, lot of different places to launch as well. Starting down in Boca Grande, you can launch at Placida Park and go all back into the back country of Bull Bay and Turtle Bay. And then all the way up the coast, Venice, Sarasota, Anna Maria, Fort DeSoto, all good kayak friendly launches. So you know what? And some of the kayaks today even have live well systems that you can keep shrimp, tarpon crabs, and even a few pilchards, not a lot, but you can keep them alive with the bubbler. All in all, our region paddle, paddle sport fishing has become a way of life. My first photo tonight is of Economy Tackle Kayak Guide, Davis Gurr, with a big old tarpon he got this past week in his Hobie kayak. 
focus. And then my second photo is an old friend and expert kayak guide, Steve Gibby Gibson of Southern Draw Guide Service. And that's actually a picture out catching freshwater species out at Lake Manatee. Nice. Staying in short, staying in shore, Rick, with all the rain that we've had. It's funny, you told me this rain was coming before we even got it. And uh, with all the rain we've had, uh, the red fishing is really fired off. I don't know if it's the tannic water or all the small hatch bait that's come up into the rivers, but it, it's a lot of bait. And normally you don't see this till July, August, but it's already happened. A lot of bunch of red fish are in South Tampa Bay around Joe's Island, McGill Bay, down toward south. I've gotten reports of red fish around the Spoil Islands and oyster bars in Bull Bay, Turtle Bay, as well as on the east side over by Burnt Store. On the higher tide, you're going to want to fish up on the oyster bars, up against the mangroves. On the lower stages of the tide, you're going to want to fish the potholes in the troughs or just on the outside of the bar. Chunks of ladyfish, cut bait, or live pinfish under a cork. If you're into throwing lures, topwater bone colored surface plug works real good, or a soft plastic like the Saltwater Assassin Golden Brim on a four inch sea shad with a chartreuse jig head. My redfish photo tonight is with a happy client, Jim Martier, and he was fishing with my good friend, Captain Gary Huffman of Tuna Breath Charters. Rolling offshore, red snapper, you know, the opening of commercial season was a couple of weeks ago and uh, recreational season opens today. All reports, Rick, the red snapper bite's gonna be strong for the folks. Uh, 130 to 150 feet of water is a good starting point. Some of the fish are in closer, but if you want some good ones to take home for the dinner plate, start out there in 130 feet. Live pinfish, frozen sardines will get the job done. Standard bottom rig or a chicken rig smaller areas of hard bottom as well as ledges pay attention to your bottom machine find the bait stacks and you're going to find your red snappers We've got a red snapper photo tonight of captain tim no and a happy client aboard the flying fish and then last species tonight gag grouper you know i've been mentioning the red grouper a lot but now that the gag season's open plenty of good gag groupers over ledges wrecks and areas of hard bottom in 90 to 130 feet of water and you know what? The best bait has been the live pinfish, but it's not a bad idea to bring some frozen bait and sabiki up some big thread fins as well. Captain Tim No, on a recent flying fish overnight trip, scored gags up to 48 pounds, as well as a lot of American red snappers. And speaking of the 48 pound gag, that photo tonight right there is aboard the flying fish out of Marina Jacks with Captain Tim No. Man, Paige, you know that big gag it is on my list to catch, and I just seem to never be able to catch a big one like that. So I'm going to challenge people out there. If they think they can put me on a big gag, I'm all in. Oh, all shoot. In. You said it. I believe Tim, I believe Tim no can. All right, well, I Do believe. Do you know he can? I huh? believe I'd like to know. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, it's time to read the Daiquiri Deck hotspots from the Central West region. Captain Page says that uh, good nighttime snook fishing off of the newly opened Anna Maria City Pier as well as the Rod and Reel Pier just west of the City Pier. And then offshore, red snapper are holding on hard bottom areas and ledges in 130 to 150 feet of water off of Venice south to Boca Grande. All right, Rick, let's talk about CCA Star for just a second. We only have a few weeks before the star competition begins. So make sure you are registered and entered in the weekly Freebie Friday drawing for a $250 prize package. Star is a catch photo competition that offers prizes for inshore and offshore species and $500,000 in prizes and scholarships. Go to CCAFloridaStar.com to register and enter. You really have nothing to lose. Nope. Yeah, Freebie Friday. Good. I'm That's liking it. it. All right, Floridians, the Bell Central East and Garmin Panhandle regions are up next. So keep paddling and we'll be right back on the Florida Insider. Fishing Report. Oh, you're awake. Yes. Good. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventure. Garmin, join the club. Florida Coast Equipment, 
Florida's largest Kubota dealership, serving Southeast and Southwest Florida and Florida's Space and Treasure Coasts, and Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. Real Legends Performance Clothing. Everything you need to be comfortable on the water all day long. Keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime or go to reallegends.com to find a Bell store near you. Every year, Noble Air Charter flies over 20,000 outdoorsmen and families just like you, economically, to over 300 Bahamian and Florida destinations. Noble Air Charter makes a substantial investment improving booking and aircraft route planning to create the most affordable and economical flight possible. And tomorrow, Noble Air's team will rise to the challenge to raise the bar yet again. Navigating at night can be dangerous, even for the most experienced drivers. With over 400,000 pixels, Night Track makes it possible to navigate in the dark with confidence. Night Track seamlessly interfaces with all multifunction displays, 2013 or newer, and offers boaters or the outdoorsmen peace of mind at an affordable price. For more information, call 251-605-9100. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're talking with our Bells Central East Region Captain, Jim Ross, who has some paddle vessel tips and tricks that will help you get that weekend bite. Jim, start your yakking. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a, a lot of fun watching the development of paddle boards, kayaks, canoes in this region. We kind of initiated the whole paddle board, canoe, kayak craze back in the day with our no motor zone, uh, our 15 square mile uh, sea cow uh, sanctuary up in the Banana River that's just a little bit north of Port Canaveral. And, th but I'll tell you, there's so many places that used to be inaccessible that they're so accessible now because you can put these little mini vessels in and cruise all over the place. Basically, you can fish them in any body of water that's just large enough that you can't cast from one bank to the other. And they're super portable, so it allows you to sneak up and uh, slide them in, fish little little hidden places. And I'll tell you, guys fishing out of kayaks, paddle boards and, and, and canoes are catching a lot of fish that uh, that a lot of us boat big boaters don't really have a chance to even get to. Now, one, one thing you have to keep in mind though, most of the time the paddle boards are a little bit noisier than your kayaks and canoes are. And so you have to make sure that you approach fish properly. You can't really paddle them into the wind most of the time because you'll get like, like on a boat, you'll get hull slap. Um, and so you want to try and approach fish on a downwind. But other, the other two are pretty much can cut right through the waves and get into uh, cut into anything uh, that they want to, as long as you know you're not gotten as long as you don't have too much waves uh, trying to basically crash over the top of you. Um, you know the other thing that's that's really cool about kayaks and canoes is that there's a lot of guides in my region that are actually taking guys out on these type of craft as well, and it's something that. You can do uh, for 15, 20 minutes. You can do it for an hour and a half, or you can do it all day if you want to. It just depends on your stamina. But you can get to a lot of different pieces of water that don't see regular fish uh, or fishing activity, and you can catch a lot of fish in them. Now, my second species is bass. And I wanted to talk about the bass because I had talked with Captain Jonathan Wilson the other day, and he said the bass were absolutely fired up in the Central Florida lakes right now. He says in particular, he's been fishing in Toho because there's a lot of flowing water coming through the different chains and coming through Toho. So places like Shingle Creek and, and some of those areas where you've got water flowing are really producing great numbers of bass right now. He's getting 30 to 50 bass in a morning and they're throwing topwater plugs, they're throwing jerk baits. In fact, one of the better jerk baits that he was talking about thrown on the Toho chain, and they also will work on other chains like the Butler and the Conway chain, is the Bass Assassin 5-inch Shad. And you want to rig it weedless 
uh, with a uh, with a weedless worm hook and either watermelon green, avocado with a red flake, or Arkansas uh, Shiner seem to be really good colors right now. And Captain John photo here of Jim and uh, that he had out uh, they down from Wisconsin the other day, and man, they caught some really nice fish on artificial. But for those of you guys that live bait, live shiners are still doing a great job. So our average bass is running about two to three pounds, but if you've got live shiners or you get on a really good morning bite, sometimes you'll catch some eight, 10 pounders. Now swinging offshore, the dolphin bite has been, it's been getting better throughout the whole region. Most of the action is still happening outside of the 140 foot mark uh, with 170, 180 to 200 being, uh, seems to be where the best places are. But you wanna stop anywhere where you see flying fish or ballyhoo or any other type of bait fish uh, that's on the surface because that's where the, the fish are gonna come to. They're gonna come to that bait and areas where that bait is at are gonna be key places for you guys to troll your skirted valley hill around. Now, most of our dolphin right now are running about three to seven pounds, but we do have a few gaffer sized dolphin out there in the 15 pound range. And every once in a while, there's you know some of those big boys. I just got a report just today, another fella out of Sebastian caught a 72 or 74 pound fish. I don't have a confirmation on the weight, but if another fish in my region two weeks in a row at over 70 pounds. So that is a gigantic dolphin, no matter where you are. And then my last species is flounder. Now the flounder bite has been really good up in the Ponce Inlet area most of the year, but they switched, uh, they kind of slid, slid down and they've, they've switched in inside of the, the port right now. And those guys that are fishing inside of the port, even from the seawalls and jetties are catching flounder on sliding sinker rigs. You want to use a short piece of eight, like eight to 10 inch leader and a sinker that's just heavy enough to maintain the bottom. You don't want it to be too heavy. Um, and most guys like to use either a knocker rig or a standard fish finder rig. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You can put them on a jig head if you want to, uh, your bait on a jig head that is. And obviously live mud minnows usually get bit faster than just about any other type of bait that's out there. But you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have to be the only kind of bait. You can use pilchards, you can use finger mullet, you can use live shrimp. Most of our average uh, fish are running two to three pounds for this flounder right now. And there are some four to five pound fish around as well. All right, One thanks. last thing I wanted to talk about was the star CCA tournament, Rick. And, um, the CCA tournament is is a great tournament for you guys and gals to get involved with because you can catch any kind of fish you want and turn it in in some kind of a category. And the great thing about that is you can take the kids out and they can catch pinfish or catfish or ladyfish. They don't have to go catch a tarpon or a tagged redfish or a snook. And so it's one of those tournaments where it gives you a lot of time to be able to get out there because it starts in July and ends in October this year and allows you to get out there at your leisure and catch anything and potentially be a winner. And that's what's great about the CCA Star Tournament. That's good advice. All right, bud, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine hotspots from the Central East region. He says, inshore, speckled trout on the flats of the Mosquito Lagoon used live pigfish rigged on a four to five-o size kale hook near the pods of mullet. And then offshore, a dolphin in 140 to 300 foot depths, troll skirted ballyhoo near weeds, rips and temperature breaks or over the 27 fathom ridge two weeks in a row over 70 pounds that's wow. insane i'm so jealous okay our captain pat Deneen in the garmin panhandle region is here to give us an exciting report for the weekend regardless of your vessel of choice talk to us pat hey Bree. i tell you what uh, kayak fishing and stand-up paddleboard fishing is extremely popular in the panhandle uh, both get uh, gulf side and bay side in the Gulf of Paddle Anglers, they're targeting kings, tarp, and snapper. Really anything that swims within, you know, two to three, sometimes, you know, four or five miles from the beach. I've seen some, some kayak anglers quite a way offshore. And I know some of the uh, stand-up paddleboard anglers, they've landed some big tarpon, cobia, even sailfish. Uh, so there's really no limits in there. A uh, Bayside, th those guys are mostly targeting redfish, trout, and jacks. But both the kayaks and the paddleboards, they're getting more customized, more fish-friendly. I got a buddy, Jorge, he's got a catamaran paddleboard that I'm extremely jealous of. It's very stable. It's totally set up for fishing with a leaning post, a cooler, live well, etc. And if I was going to paddleboard, that's what I'm going to be fishing from. Uh, the beauty of the stand-up board is the visibility from standing up. You know, you can see so much more. And there's a photo that uh, Harry Madison sent in. Harry and his wife, Kelly, with a pair of really nice redfish. They caught paddleboarding in uh, Chattahoochee Bay. And Harry's 
has caught pretty much everything I just listed up above on the paddleboard. Nice. Cool. All right, what else um, you got in shore? Go ahead, Bob. And the, Rick, the, the speckled trout fishing has been really good lately up in the pan. Uh, daytime, you want to fish early in the morning or late in the afternoon. The, the bite today was really good. The upper bay areas have been best, but this past week's rain, uh, we had a lot of rain uh, from this tropical weather that just moved through. That should push these fish you know, further down in the lower bay systems. Live baiting will definitely be the more productive. You want to set up on the points, the grass flat edges, the biomass where the mud bottoms you know, transition to that sand. Live chum liberally with uh, menhaden or pilchards. Uh, free line your baits or float them under a, a cork. If you want to lure fish, go with a bass assassin soft plastic on a light jig head. And then at nighttime, fish the dock lights with live baits. But the trout fishing has been really good. I know a Lucky Chucky uh, over in Navarre, he sent me a picture of a 30-incher they caught this morning on the first cast. I don't know if that's good, catching a big one on the first cast or not, but that's what happens. It worked. Um, offshore, the weather from Cristobal messed things up. I mean, it's been very rough for the last week. But it is calming down nicely now. And the red snapper are going to be wide open tomorrow for recreational anglers in both state and federal waters. And we're looking at some pretty good weather for really the foreseeable for the future. Uh, the snappers are going to be uh, structure-related, natural and artificial bottom. The county websites have publicly funded artificial reef locations. You can find them on, on, on you know, Google it. You can find it. And you're going to catch fish. These sites are holding plenty of red snapper right now. Use live baits on a Carolina rig or cut bait on a chicken rig or chum them up with some chunk baits and then just free line a, a hook bait back with a, with a chunk bait. This season's looking really good for snappers and there are some big snappers really close to the beach right now. And then finally offshore, the federal boats snapper fishing this past week before the weather also caught a good number of wahoo. They're trolling lures between bottom spots and 130 to 200 feet of water. So while out snapper fishing this week, pull wahoo baits between the spots or just go, you know, target the wahoo. Even clip it along at 15 to 20 knots, you know, that you Wahoos are notorious for, for biting a fast trolled bait. But if you see some floating debris, slow down and check it out. And I snagged a photo from Travis Reynolds with a really colorful Wahoo he caught on the charter with uh, Captain Chris McConnell out of Destin on the all in. So um, this is looking good up here, Rick. Good picture yes, there, Pat. Is. Thank you so much for taking care of Jennings for me. He said he had a great time. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. He says triple tail and Appalachia around the crab fl floats or the tide lines using live bait under a cork. And then offshore, red snapper is wide open fish natural and artificial gulf bottom with live baits. Wide open. All right, great news, everyone. We are gearing up for a great fishing season around South Florida and beyond with Noble Air, the exclusive charter flight carrier for folks eager to get fishing. Right, Rick? You're absolutely right, Bree. And you know, sometimes going to the Bahamas, which is getting ready to reopen, can be problematic. You got to make your reservations ahead of time. They fly you through Nassau, and it's not a lot of fun. Right. But with Noble Air, it's become very economical. You can fly right here out of Miami. The best part is, Bree, you can pick the time when you oh, leave and nice. pick the time when you come home. So keep that in mind, guys. Yep, go, go to, to NobleAirCharter.com. Noble we're Look on the us. page. We're on go it. there. All Tell right. them Rick and Bree sent you. Exactly. All right, fishing from just about anywhere and anything can be done all over this beautiful state. And coming up next, we're fishing in the beautiful Florida Keys. But first, we're headed to the CCA workbench to see what beautiful new products Dave has for us. I got some cool stuff. Yeah, nice knives. Nice knives. Oh, nice they cut things. Oh, no. Knives oh, no. not cut things. Go figure. We'll be I got to watch out. I'm going to get my finger. <laughs> And you'll bleed more. I'll bleed more. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Ameritrail. Load. Launch. Relax. Real Legends. Exclusively at Bells. Okuma. Inspired Fishing. Discover Crystal River, Florida. And Maverick Boat Group. Makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. 
It's an extended family of four strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. Sons of fishes. Ain't enough fish on this lake for two clubs. Really? Well, we see plenty of fish live with pan optics. Yep. Dang! We should get pan optics. Maybe we'll just take yours. What's going on here? You boys have license? Yes, yes sir. sir. Nope. There he is. Oh, I got him. There are moments in our lives that make us realize how fortunate we really are to breathe fresh air, to taste the salt of the sea, to be able to roam free in nature. The Florida Keys and Key West are now open to visitors. We have so much to be grateful for. Well, we're here at the CCA workbench and, you know, new products is uh, one of my favorite parts. So, Dave, what part are we going to start with? We're going to start with a Starbright water-based waterproofing spray down there. And this is great stuff. If you have any of that breathable waterproof gear, you know, and after a while you wash it or it gets out in the sun or you wear it a few times, it starts to lose some of its waterproofing. Well, this water-based stuff here, you give it a good spray, saturate your garment really good and spread it out with a sponge. Make sure you get all the areas covered, let it dry, and you're waterproof again. You can go back out. So you can take an old favorite rain jacket Correct. that maybe is actually... Put it on boat tops, canvas top, cushions in your, in your boat, uh, lawn furniture, anything that you want to make last longer that gets wet, you know, and this, and this will keep the water off of it. It's low odor solution, so it doesn't really stink or nothing, and it doesn't have any solvents in it, so it's good for just about any fabric, you know. Nice. Yeah. Well, Starbright.com. Starbright.com. Starbright waterproofing water-based spray. I Next, like we have that. the caddy can down there, a uh, waterproof bag. That's their dry bag. It's a 10 liter bag, that's, which is about two and a half gallons of stuff you can put in there. It's made out of PVC and tarp, so tarpaulin, so it's really hot, strong. It's big canvas covered PVC yeah. bag. Yeah. It's not going to leak. You know, it's got uh, the adjustable shoulder strap on there and you welded seam, so it's not going to come apart on you. Upgraded buckles and the roll top, which is you know common for waterproof bags and keeps everything out. Good job, Caddy, Caddy Cam. Cam. I like. The, I love the color. Yeah, you know, it's very nice. They very got nice they got a lot of blue cool products. Keep going, guys. At Caddy Can, make sure you keep it coming. <laughs> That's right. Next, we got some not water barbecue sauce down there. Um, sauces and rubs. Actually, this these guys. Uh, had a big night out on the river one time and they got <laughs> they got up in the morning after drinking some moonshine and looked at the camp and said boy that stuff's not water is it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looks like water but it ain't well that's how they got the name for their barbecue sauce and their traditional barbecue sauce you won't be surprised uh you know they're not too sweet and not too hot they're just perfect good uh fresh ingredients for everything's uh you know made here in the united states good stuff and they got uh some good hot sauces and rubs you know, really good. great for your fish on Father's fish, Day weekend. I know a pork. lot of us are going to be barbecuing, so Correct. you guys can go to notwater.com. Not water barbecue. Notwaterbbq.com not and go All get right. some of that. What else we got? Last today? but not least here, we got some Rhineland cutlery, you know, really high grade uh, German steel knives. Uh, mm -hmm. Perfectly balanced. They got these really nice handles on them. You can see how sharp they were when I was cutting that paper in the, in the beginning. Uh, just really nice knives. It, this is a big 20-piece set right here. It comes with the steak knives and everything. Little fillet knives. They, they've got everything. Zero pressure, pretty much, because they're so so dang sharp. Uh, very comfortable with the tapered bolster on there. 
uh, razor sharp 18 degree edge and it'll hold an edge forever because it's that good German steel. Right. And uh, they can even put, like you see there, they can even put a little photo in the blade. They yeah, can use they a laser that. to etch a logo, a photo. And then they got uh, our brand here. Right, Clifford. right. You can do all kinds of stuff with those things. So you can customize these as a gift, whether you buy one knife or you buy a complete set. Right, or a set of steak knives. They also make folding knives and, you know, uh, just regular all kinds of really nice knives on their on their website and if you go to they have a special website for us rhinelandfs.com if you go there everything on that site is 50 percent off for the people who watch the show they go into rhinelandfs.com fs fs it says rhineland now do you have to put in a code you have to put in a code for 50 percent off i think uh, you use the yeah, code it's f-i-f-r f-i-f-r 50 f-i-f-r 50 yeah dot com yeah that's right yeah I'm glad I remembered that for you, Dave. That's yes, you did. Yeah, I saved your ass. Yeah, you did saved you? my butt. Did saved you? His ass. you didn't see him looking over at me, did you? I was looking, because Bree like said it last night. Steel trap over here. All yeah. right, before we move on to our next region, we want to remind you about the Yamaha Spring Savings Sales Event going on now through June 15th. Your savings could include up to $500 in dealer credit for 2.5 to 75 HP models, two extra years of warranty for 90 to 300 models, and one extra year of warranty on 350 models. For more details go to yamahaoutboards.com all right captain randy tau in the florida keys is now on the line with your weekend report paddle or no paddle give us the fish cast randy hey good evening fish fish fans you know here in the garmin keys region there's no shortage of places you could rent a paddle board and a lot of people will just drive down us1 and they'll find an area that looks really nice they'll pull over they'll put their paddle board in and it's a lot of fun i see a lot of people doing it and it's really something that's popular throughout the Keys. Now, it's not as popular for, for a fishing platform because most of our fishing is done away from the highway and it's a little too far to paddle out to. And around some of these bridges, there's a lot of swift moving current and you really don't want to get caught up in something like that. So most people stay away from the bridges and they just paddle around just having fun uh, on the bay side mostly. A little bit on the ocean side, but primarily it's a bayside thing, and it's certainly something that uh, throughout the Keys, you can find a lot of places to rent it for a half an hour, an hour, whatever you're looking to do. And I know um, the Lorelei is where I fish out of in Isla Mirada, mile marker 82. They have a, a paddleboard rental right there in the back of the restaurant that you could rent a paddleboard anytime you want right there. I, uh, I've got some mangrove snapper stories. Tell you what, this time of year, it changes in the backcountry where the mangrove snappers leave the islands and they get more into the channels and it is probably part of their spawning thing because um, a lot of the channels if you've got some thick grass in it there's some really nice mangrove snappers right now so you want to you want to find a channel that's got some grass in the bottom make sure it's not mud because a lot of the backcountry is uh, missing grass so you find a grassy spot put your chum bag out and within a few minutes, you're probably going to have some mangroves coming toward you. And um, you can catch them on live shrimp. You're certainly going to catch some small ones. But if you want to target some of the bigger mangrove snappers, you want to use um, a pilchard or a piece of ballyhoo or even take a pinfish and cut it in half or fillet a pinfish, and you're going to catch some of the bigger mangrove snappers. We were catching some this past week, 18 to 24 inches in the backcountry, which is a great mangrove snapper for back there and i've got a picture of jim sparkman from fort lauderdale with a net full of backcountry mangroves nice all right i'll be calling you on this one i got a guy on friday who wants to go catch something for the dinner so uh um i gotta know about that and uh let's go offshore oh boy oh boy <laughs> <laughs> well you know mutton snapper is one of my favorite things to fish for on the ocean side and you know it's all about just being prepared, get your bait together, get your rods rigged. I like to drift around some hard bottom, and most of the structure that you have with wrecks and things like that, they'll hold amberjacks, they'll hold groupers, but the mutton snappers are gonna be away from it. They're not gonna be on top of that structure. So you're gonna wanna drift around those areas, and I like fishing a long leader, about 30 feet maybe, and uh, you wanna get that bait away from your lead, and braided line is a big plus, and also, if you can catch live bait like a cigar minnow or ballyhoo or a pilchard, that's going to really work well for you. 
And some of these wrecks may vary between 120 to 200 feet. And don't be don't be uh, surprised if you're out in 300 feet dropping on some of these wreck areas catching some mutton snappers because they, they do go in the deeper water this time of year. I've got a photo of Jeffrey Ropeson from uh, Virginia with a nice mutton he caught the other day off Isla Mirada. Nice. Tell me about the dolphin, Randy. Yeah, here we are, Rick. It's dolphin time. Everybody's dolphin fishing. I went today myself, and uh, it seems to be from about 550 feet on out. You really want to pay attention to the birds, to the weeds, to the current, and you get on you get on a set of birds, and you're going to find some dolphin. They're scattered weeds, and depending if you're coming out of Marathon or Key Largo or Alamrata, your your weeds are going to vary if you got a weed line if it's scattered. So you can't really count on finding a weed line. But the birds, the birds this time of year are are really giving it away uh, with what's going on. And being prepared, having your rods ready, because when you get in that school of dolphin, that might be the only school you find throughout the day. Might be your first, might be your last. You never know. So take advantage of it. Have your rods ready. Get those fish on. Keep them. Keep them on so you can catch others, and you'll end up like this photo I have from Captain Davy Jones on Munster Fishing at a Square Grouper, doing what he does best with his anglers. Nice. All right, bub, good job. Pretty. Thank you so much. It's time to take a look at the Sunset Inn hot spots for the Florida Keys region. Mangrove snappers fish the channels that are clear with good current and grass on the bottom with fresh cut bait for your best results. And then offshore dolphin, look for the weeds and the birds starting in 550 feet and head south to cross their path. The birds and the weeds. That's <laughs> my favorite kind of talk about the birds and the weeds. All right, coming up in the Keys region is the Key West Marlin Tournament, July 22nd through July 25th and is limited to the first 75 boats only. This year's tournament is featuring $50,000 in guaranteed cash prizes and coincides with the annual Hemingway Days celebration in Key West. To enter and find out more information, head over to keywestmarlin.com and good luck. All right, we've got your Bells Southwest and Casa Vieja Southeast regions coming at you next, so be ready to paddle, cast, reel, and paddle again. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow and tag us in your photos on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page. What's what's the name of it again? Captain Rick oh, Murphy. Oh, right, of okay. Of course, see you soon. Of course. <laughs> The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Alvy Reels, a better way to fish. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Strike Zone Fishing, Finding a shoreline is easy. Finding a sure thing is not. For over 20 years, anglers from Kitty Hawk to California and every shore in between have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. So just stop with the fishing and get busy with the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club lures or visit fishbites.com. Come explore untouched Florida, where you'll step into holy sea cow and fish pristine waters where you'll reel in, whoa! Come discover Crystal River with exciting adventures and incredible surprises everywhere. From exhilarating river adventures to scalloping in the Gulf to delicious fish to fork cuisine, this is the place where you can relax into, ah! Just a short drive from Tampa and Orlando is the amazing Discover Crystal River, Florida. Learn more at discovercrystalriverfl.com.
dive into scallop season and become part of a tradition in Crystal River and Homosassa. Let our local captains take you out on an underwater adventure, dive along the unspoiled shores of the nature coast, and fill your bag with delectable bay scallops. Then we'll cook your catch for dinner. It's a local tradition and a Florida favorite. Discover Crystal River invites you to plan your scallop season adventure from July 1st through September 24th at discovercrystalriverfl.com. We're doing that. Man, that I can't wait. Go? It makes me want to go so bad. Yeah. All right, the best spots can be found fishing out of a kayak, canoe, or paddleboard. And your Bell Southwest captain, Ronnie Houston, is on the line to give us a heads up on some of them. Tell us, Ronnie. Well, like always, it's always a pleasure to represent the southwest coast of Florida and the Bell Southwest region. But you know what? Over the years, we have talked about different types of canoes, kayaks, paddleboards. But what about the easy access locations to catch fish? You know, to the north, Ponce Park and Punta Gorda. You know, putting in there and heading south on the inside of the sandbar and following the shoreline till it turns to the east towards Alligator Creek. You know, Lover's Key Boat Ramp in Bonita. Putting in at the boat ramp, paddling straight across from the boat ramp to the flat, working the independent islands on the left, and then also working your way back to the east wall, fishing specifically from Horseshoe Key to Hickory Bay, along the wall, independent islands and oyster bars. But you know, another area further to the south is Port of the Island. Working the canal on the tide. Outgoing, working it out, and incoming, bringing you back to make paddling a lot easier. And then also Chuckalow Scaling Park. Simple as leaving the ramp, Fishing the isolated oyster bars, then working your way down the shoreline into Chukaluski Bay towards the Barren River. You know, all these areas presently holding snook, reds, and juvenile tarpon, and that's all due to the rains, but the key's going to be here. The lower tides seem to be working better. You know, higher tides, you're going to have to skip some bushes. But artificials have been working well. Top water walk the dog lures, golden silver spoons, and a variety of four inch bass assassin paddle tails in white, lime truce. Houdini and Copperfield due to the uh, tannic water. These are all easy access locations, and I can tell you right now, I've been fishing in all those areas in the last couple of weeks. There is an opportunity to get a good bite simply by paddling down the shoreline. Now, right now on the inshore side, you're going to talk about the Snooks, Estero Bay, the Independent Islands, as well as the East Wall, not too far from the boat ramp, Rocky Bay to Hickory Bay, Mount Lachey from the bridge to the power lines, as well as the Mayaka Cutoff in Charlotte Harbor. Most of these areas right now are holding numbers, although a lot of the snook right now are anywhere from 21 to 25 inches with the opportunity of a couple of flat sized snook. Also, the rain has helped this bite. It's cooled down the water temps, but here we go again. The first half of the incoming and the last half of the outgoing. When the water floods, the bite can get tough. I strongly suggest artificials two and a half inch to four inch subsurface lures lipless, top water walk the dog lures, and the bass assassin vapor shads in white, baby bass, Houdini on a 4.0 to 5.0 trocar screw lock uh, 8 ounce weight hook. But live filters and pinfish will also work as well. And have a nice picture of a snook on a nighttime bite down in Chukaluski uh, Islands fishing at night with the moon. Now, offshore side. With the system we just had go through, the weather is going to be a lot better this week and towards the weekend. The red snappers. With the season opening June 1st, some of the guys were able to get out before that tropical system across the goal for the weekend. Now, Captain Mike Avenon reports right now from Naples to Fort Myers Beach, typically starting at about 130, but he says the key zones have been 150 to 200. Like always, he says squid gets the bite going, but live pinfish have been catching the bigger red snappers. But he's also telling me while you're in those areas, it should be pretty easy in those depths to get you limited red snappers. Also mixed in those areas are red groupers and scamps and no need for different baits. The same baits will work is what he's telling me. And I got a picture of a nice red snapper that was just caught just before that system moved in. Now, with the weather we've been having, the blackfin tuna, Mike Avenon has been telling me, concentrate your efforts right now from Wiggins Pass to Sanibel, from 150 feet out, working the same areas as you would be for the red snappers. But he said there's a little different thing going on. The key's been looking for the birds. So as you're moving from one spot to another and you see some birds, make an attempt to try start trolling some blue and white feathers also along with some lures that resemble flying fish. He says the key is going to be fish around the birds, or you can even cast or drift live filters and herring in those areas where you see the birds. He strongly suggests 50-pound fluorocarbon with a 7.0 to 8.0 trocar circle hook. And I got a picture of a nice uh, couple uh, black fins that were also caught. But while he was out there fishing, the seas were calm. He got on the three sails last week while fishing for red snappers, catching black fins, and had the opportunity in that weather 
get three sales in the last couple of days. So right now, the weather's going to be coming out of the east for the next couple of days. Weekend looks great. Get out. Opportunity for red snappers, black fence, and you might get lucky and catch a sailfish. Great report, Ronnie. Thank you so much. It's time for the Caddy Can Southwest Hotspots. Ronnie says that inshore trout, west wall and east wall of Charlotte Harbor are on the outside of the sandbar on the low water. And then offshore, mangrove snapper, Sanibel to Boca Grande, 65 to 85 feet of water fishing, noted structure and ledges. Chumming is the key to locate them. I like that new Catacan dry bag you had. Yeah, man. Over there. That was pretty yeah, nice. It Good was job, nice. Catacan. I like it. All right, the Casa Vieja southeast region is no stranger to paddle fishing. So let's listen up to Captain Jimbo Thomas, who's giving us the 411. Go for it, Jimbo. Well, Bree, I believe I'm a stranger to it, but there's a lot of people in this region that are not. You know, paddle boards and kayaks have come a long way, and they just definitely keep getting bigger and bigger. Before long, I think they're going to call them boats. But, you know, a lot of these new ones, kayaks especially, they're equipped with electronics, rod holders, bait wells, which makes them great for both inshore and offshore fishing. And the biggest advantage of these paddle boards and kayaks, especially when you're fishing inshore, is that they can get in really shallow water and they're extremely quiet, which makes it easy to sneak up on spooky fish like snook, tarpon, bonefish, and permit. Now, most of the beaches and boat ramps throughout the region, they are kayak and paddleboard friendly. And for most areas, it's only a two to two and a half mile paddle to get offshore into the deep water, which I'm told is about a 45 minute to one hour paddle. Now, also, you could just put a Rodan trolling motor up in the front and toss those paddles and let the electric take you out, but that's just me. But, you know, it's not <laughs> uncommon for kayakers to catch sailfish, kingfish, and mahis you know, fishing along the edge of the Gulf Stream, or you can fish groupers and snappers along the reef. That's on calm days, of course. And then kayaks and paddle boards are also a great way to explore the Everglades and also fish the urban lake and canal system for largemouth and peacock bass. Now, inshore, there's quite a few bonefish and permit being caught in South Biscayne Bay, and a paddleboard would be a great way to sneak up on those spooky fish. Good friend Captain Joe Gonzalez, he says that with this nice weather we've had the last couple of days, the bonefish and permit fishing has really picked up. Now, I'm not sure if it's really picked up. It's just been a lot easier to fish for him with the nice weather. But he's been finding bonefish on the flats from Soldier's Key south to Caesars Creek. They've been on the edges and spills of the flats. They've been tailing and mudding on the lower stages of the tides. Or if you can fish an afternoon outgoing tide, that will give you prime sunlight for sight fishing. And of course, you want to put on a good pair of Costa sunglasses so you can see those fish cruising the flats. Now, there's also been some big permit around the Ragged Keys areas. These permit have been in the channels as well as the hard bottom flats on the ocean side. And Joe's been fishing these bonefish with shrimp and skimmer jigs and the permit with small to medium sized crab and crab pattern flies. Look for flats that have good moving water and signs of life. That's where the most activity is gonna be. Now offshore, we're still finding some decent sized blackfin tunas along the edge of the Gulf Stream. These tunas are being caught on live herrings, pilchers, and sardines. You want to fish them on flat lines or under the kite. Best depths have been anywhere from 120 to 200 feet of water. And if you can find some north current and blue water, as always, that's where the best fish is going to be. We've been scaling down to 30-pound fluorocarbon leaders using small hooks like 4.0 to 5.0 trocar circle hooks depending on what size bait we're using. And the best bite's gonna be early in the morning or the, or late in the afternoon, just before sunset if you stay out late. And a lot of these tunas have been in the 20 to 30 pound range. And then in those same areas as those tunas, we've had good kingfish bite here in the Southeast region this past week. There haven't been many huge kings, but a lot of these fish are in the 10 to 15 pound class. And a lot of them are being caught on the troll they're being caught using a number two planer or a wireline outfit. You want to get the bait down deep. And as for baits, you want to try a pink, green, or a blue sea witch in a four to six inch bonita strip behind that sea witch. Or you can use a three and a half drone spoon, silver, green, and the red spoons have been working well. And as for the live baits, herrings, pilchers, and sardines, that's been getting bites. You want to fish them on the drift or under the kite. Best depths have been anywhere from 100 to 140 feet of water. Now I got a photo here, 
And this is a great day. We had fishing last week aboard the Thomas Flyer. We had a limited kingfish, a bunch of blackfin tunas, and a few sails that we caught and uh, tagged and released even. You guys wow. are on fire. I got a question for you, Jimbo. You know you talk about kingfish and drone spoons quite often. So my question is, is there something, some specific way you like to fish for that drone spoon? Well, you want to use a very long leader if you're fishing it behind the planer or on the wire line. Either way, long leader, and you want to make sure that that spoon is working really good. A lot of the guys that get really good at fishing those uh, spoons, they'll tune it. They'll bend it a little bit to make it uh, flash even more. But depth is a key. And a long, long leader is the, probably the most important thing to get a lot of bites fishing, uh, whether you're using the, the sea witch or the spoon for that matter. All right, thank you so much for clarifying that for us. It's time to take a look at the r, &R Tackle Southeast Hotspots. He says that inshore, get an early start on the outside flats of Biscayne Bay and fish with small live crabs, crab pattern flies, and skimmer jigs for the tailing bone fishing permit on the lower stages of the tide. And then offshore, look for a mixed bag of sailfish, blackfin tunas, kingfish, dolphin fishing with live baits under a kite in 100 to 300 feet of water. The late afternoon and early evening bite has really been best. You we have. had a mixed we, bag this past weekend. Were yeah, you gonna man. say that? That's exactly. Are we on the same level? Dang, oh, man, I was getting there. Say, we caught our tunas early and late. We did. Yeah, we did. Exactly. All right, if you plan on catching in the Fish Bites East region this weekend, stay anchored because we'll be right back with your captain right here on the one and only Florida Insider Fishing Report. Look at that Kubota, man. Love it. You like it's my track? My track, just sexy. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. The IGFA. Fish for the world. Sportsman's Adventures. Fishing for adventure. And Bells. Everything you need to live life local. On an island surrounded by warm, clear water and a million ways to enjoy it, it's amazing you'll ever have time to come up for air. Key West, close to perfect, far from normal. Get a great deal on the Kubota L-Series tractor. Built upon a solid foundation of cast iron and steel, the Kubota L-Series tractor is the number one selling compact tractor in the U.S. for over 10 years. With a powerful Kubota diesel engine and dependable gear or HST transmission, it's ready to take on your toughest projects. Right now, get the L2501 HST for payments as low as $149 a month. Florida Coast Equipment, Florida's highest volume Kubota dealer. of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Have you ever felt your heart pounding while feeling the power of a tarpon in the Florida Keys? Or experience the changing colors of a mahi as you bring it on board? Whether it's in the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, Guatemala, or the Florida Everglades, Murphy's Law Sports Fishing has the ability to guide you to the fish of a lifetime. To book your trip today, call 305-246-0673 or go to murphyslawsportfishing.com. Today's power pole tip is about how I really love how the charge really helps me extend my day of fishing. Now let me explain. When we're running up and down the beach chasing schools of tarpon or maybe on a spot lock in a channel situation, we're really using a lot of voltage out of our trolling motors. Now when I hook a fish and I simply jump down and turn that switch and start the big motor, now I immediately start replenishing my trolling motor battery voltage. That's what the charge does. 
I also have the ability to monitor exactly what's going on with those batteries. And in Florida, when we have 14 hour days, this could really extend your whole day of fishing. So keep in mind that whenever you're fishing and you need to recharge your trolling motor system, all you have to do is simply turn the key on and now you have the ability to recharge your trolling motor system. If you have any questions, you can go to PowerPole.com and that's today's PowerPole tip. Good tip, Rick. All right, in the Fish Bites East region, there are so many options when it comes to fishing from a paddleboard, kayak, or canoe. So let's talk with Captain Mike Holiday to get the details. You know, it's true, Bree. Uh, whether you fish from a kayak, a canoe, or a stand up paddleboard, the advantages these watercraft give you is access to areas you can't fish from shore, to areas that tend not to be as pressured as others. Uh, you can launch at one of the public accesses in Palm Beach County uh, out on the beach and, and target the offshore species like cobia, sailfish, and amberjacks, and kingfish. Most of the guys that do that throw jigging spoons or they fish live bait, but you can just drift a dead sardine on a triple hook rig and do pretty well. Uh, along the beaches to the north in Martin and St. Lucie County, you can throw swimming plugs or live bait. You can throw them a tarpon. You can throw uh, jumbo jacks and kingfish and cobia that are coming in close to feed on those near shore bait schools. And you know, if inshore is your game, uh, you can launch in places like Twin Rivers Park, Round Island Park, Pepper Park, or really anywhere where the road opens up along A1A or Indian River Drive, and you'll have access to the grass flats, the seawalls, and the docks in those areas that most people can't fish from shore. So you want to start your day throwing a, a Houdini-colored saltwater assassin four-inch sea shad, or you can throw a topwater plug, and then switch over to a live shrimp one. Uh, once the sun gets up, you can put it on a rattle trap uh, or fish a gold spoon and do really well. The other thing we got going, the spotted sea trout bite in St. Lucie and Indian River counties is on fire in places like the mouth of Little Mud Creek, uh, the flat that's outside of the mouth of Little Mud Creek, the Middle Cove, uh, along the docks at Midway Road, Torpy Road, the Mooring Flats. Those are all real good areas right now. The key is to be on the water in the dark because the bite is over by around nine o'clock in the morning. Although, you know, it will go longer on those overcast days, maybe the 9, 30, 10 o'clock. In the areas where there's dense seagrass, it's mostly smaller fish uh, in that one to two to three pound class. Uh, and you can target those with soft plastics like a, a saltwater assassin, five inch salty snack in that watermelon red glitter or that molting color. Or you can throw a, you know, a Texas avocado colored Texas shad. The difference, the larger sea trout they're gonna be in the areas with seagrass and sandy potholes, not just dense grass, you want that sand. Or they're gonna be in the middle of uh, deeper cuts along the spoil islands in my region. At dawn, you can throw die dappers in the panhandle moon color, or you can throw topwater plugs or free line of live shrimp. And then as the sun gets up, switch to a live pinfish or filtered under a rattle cork. Right now, the kitchen sea trout's about nine pounds. All right, let's go offshore, Hollywood. Well, the sailfish bite is going strong from Jupiter to Fort Pierce with fish around the bait schools in 50 feet of water and then fish all the way out to the rips and color changes in 200 feet. Uh, there's a lot of free jumpers and fish up sunning on the surface. So if you see either, you want to run straight to that area and put out your baits. Uh, you can pull rig ballyhoo either naked or with a, a pink and blue uh, or a blue and white skirt just to cover water. Or you can run straight to the wrecks. Uh, that are holding bait and then just work those areas for a while. If you see a, a, a free jumper or a finning fish, you can run right to them, put out that same spread, or slow troll and drift that area with live pilchards, sardines, or thread fins. The average sailfish in my region right now is going to be 30 to 40 pounds. Uh, I have a photo, Pat Price on a Daymaker. Out of Stewart, he got that sailfish in 110 feet of water on a rig value and uh, with a pink and blue skirt. And then uh, the other thing going, the most consistent action in my region has been for kingfish, either along the drop off Jupiter or on the Loran Tower ledge. Uh, they're also catching kings on the Six Mile Reef, the offshore bar, and on the south side of Bethel Shoals. On the days when the wind goes west, you can slide into the beach off Pex Lake or to the Vero Cove up in Vero Beach and fish the bait schools in those areas and get those larger smoker kings. The Spanish sardines are favored bait for the commercial kingfish boats. Uh, you can put them out on, an, uh, on a wire r and kingfish rig, or you can use 50 pound fluorocarbon leader and the triple hook Palm Beach rig. 
Other good kingfish baits right now are live thread fins, pilchards, mullet, blue runners, goggle eyes if you can get them are deadly. Average king right now is 10 to 20 pounds, but fish on the beach are up to 35 pounds right now. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about the bass fishing. What you got, Hollywood? Well, all the rain we had in the last week has a water flowing in the stick marsh and also in the Keenansville Reservoir right, right nearby. And that's dropped the water temperatures, fired up the bass action. Just find the moving water, you'll find the fish. You can throw lipless crankbaits or a black shad or salt and pepper uh, silver phantom colored seven inch shad assassin. Uh, you can fish those spillways with a, a live shiner if you want. Uh, and then on the King, in the Keenansville Reservoir, the frog bite in the grass has been spectacular. Anglers are catching 30 to 40 to, 40 to 50 bass a morning. Uh, take a four inch bass assassin logger toad in the bullfrog or the white colored, really any any of the frogs that have a white belly, fire it up into the grass on 50 pound braid, crawl it out, you get that explosive strike. When the fish blows up, try and get it out of the grass as quickly as possible. Average bass, two to four pounds, with fish to seven pounds right now. So Hollywood, I got a question for you. You know, two weeks in a row, the region to the north, Jim Ross's region, they've caught two dolphin over 70 pounds. You guys catch any big dolphin south of there? We, we had them really good in April and May. We haven't seen any in, in June so far, but the, the overall dolphin bite in June has just been spectacular. Uh, and that's the same pattern we've seen for probably about four years right now. Huh. Well, I just wonder huh. why it's not very far, you know, as far as the fish swims or the bird flies. <laughs> so I just thought I would give you a, 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 ask you that question. Thank you so much. Looking forward to uh, talking to you next week again. And it's time for the TNH Marine Hotspots from the East Region. Mike says that inshore, tarping along the beach between Jupiter and Lake Worth, look for the migrating schools and throw live crabs, thread fins, or pilchards. Offshore, mutton snappers on 105 foot ledge off of Juno. Pier use pilchards, grunts, and kingfish chunks, or kingfish guts. guts. You're just curious, eh, about those dolphin? Yeah, man, because yeah, I know man. I I, I want to catch a big one. I like I'm like want to catch big everything now. Me too. Just Don't want you all? to know that. Don't we all? Yeah, Please, man. not only you. All right, stay with us, anglers. This weekend's reports <laughs> have been signed, sealed, and delivered. Yep. But <laughs> we're telling you what we're fishing for next week right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. And I'll give you a hint. They like snacks and they're cute. Ooh, oh, baby. Reliability. Yamaha is legendary for it. But it's more than a legend. It's something boaters have come to value. Why? Because it's rare. Because in this fast-paced, single-use world, few things are built to last. So when we find something that is, we hold on for dear life, to friendships, to traditions, to outboards. Because it's the lucky few who get to spend as much time on the water as they'd like. The rest of us, we look forward to those precious few days. That makes every second sacred. Every moment mean that much more. And it drives us to wring the most of every minute we get on the water. Having incredible adventures, fighting the fish, making unforgettable memories. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life. Because reliability starts here. What started in the flats and bays has migrated offshore. GPS-guided trolling motor technology has moved to boats in the 35-plus foot class and allowed anchoring capabilities on most center consoles in any depth of water. From snook and redfish inshore to grouper and swordfish way out deep, Rodan Marine Systems has a GPS anchor to hold your vessel on location. Set it, forget it, catch more fish. The only reel with over 100 years of heritage. Alvi Sidecast reels allow you to cast over 150 yards with up to 900 yards of capacity. Alvi's state-of-the-art drag and 22-inch retrieve rate per wind is perfect for any surf challenge. Alvi reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alvius.com. Next week, we're talking kids fishing, Woo! kids gone fishing. 
I hey, can actually weigh in on this. I'm gonna tell you this. Here. I'm gonna publicly say your job is in jeopardy if you don't bring some pictures of Mia for the kids. My job is in jeopardy. Oh, I'll definitely bring them. Thanks for tuning but in. I sweeten you up with some barbecue. Fifty percent off on these knives, guys. Fit for TV Fit for fifty. TV Fifty. Thanks for tuning Fit in. For See you TV next week. Fifty. Okay, That's Dave. It. That'd be a good <laughs> Father's Day, don't you think, Dave? Yes, sir. Okay, you guys buy one for me. <laughs> it is yours. It, it shows. Is. It's fine. Okay, I like it. Good night.